Alright, hey there everybody, it's the Big Dave again, and today I am super excited with what we're about to do. This game, Mega Maker, just came out this weekend. If you don't know what it is, it is basically, well, as the name implies, it's a maker for Mega Man games. If you played Super Mario Maker on the Wii U, you know exactly what this is. It's very similar to Super Mario Maker, but it's all done in the style of the original 8-bit Mega Man games, and it is just fantastic. Now, this is a PC-only game. It's an indie-developed game. It is completely free. Google Mega Maker. You can download it right now and start making your own Mega Man levels. Uh, but what I wanted to do is to go in here and basically show off the builder, let you know how it works, give you a quick rundown of the game, so let's get started. So as I said, this is a completely PC game, so we'll be building everything with the mouse. Now you can configure controllers as soon as you go. In fact, let me show you. So you press start, and you have these options right here. Uh, you can play levels, you can build levels, here's some extra features, and then your options down here, you click on that, you can configure your keyboard however you want, you can configure your gamepad however you want, and you can make the, the screen size as big as you want. So I'm using a gamepad. Um, I'm using my Razer right here. It's connected to my PC. So that's what I use to play. So you will be using a controller to test play your levels if you want to. You can set it up for, for just keyboard, but I don't recommend doing that, especially if you're going to upload levels for other people to play, because I think a lot of people are going to be expecting to be able to use their gamepad uh, on their PC when they're playing your level. So I recommend setting it up uh, setting up the gamepad to play your levels. So when you click on build here, it gives you these options to make a new level, to load a level you've already made, or to back out of it. Now when you come in here for the first time, there will be an option to use a tutorial that'll guide you through the basics of the editor. I do recommend doing it, but it is kind of long. They kind of use a uh, Dr. Wily and Dr. Light cartoon to like talk you through the editor. And it does take a little while, it's kind of hand-holding, but it's very good for people to go through because if you're coming in this expecting it to be exactly like Mario Maker, it is going to be a little bit different. And the tutorial does show you how to go through all the menus to find what you're looking for. But I'm also going to do that right here a little bit faster and hopefully can get you right into level building. All right, so we're gonna hit new level here and it's gonna load up the editor. As you can see, we have a blank screen here with a Mega Man just floating around over my mouse cursor. So all your tools are up here at the very top. Up here at the left, you got options. These are level specific options. Like for Mega Man, do we want him to be able to slide in this level? Do we want him to be able to charge shots in this level? If he can charge his shots, what type of charge shot do you want? So this editor features uh, assets from Mega Man's one through six, all on the original NES. In here, you can also pick the background color you want. Right now, it's this kind of dark blue. But we can make it black, we can make it green, yellow, red, whatever we want the background color to be. The background color will be there only in areas where you don't specify what you want the background to look like. So let's specify what we want the background to look like. That is in this tab right here. So this is basically what most of the menus are gonna look like. They're gonna say what game you're pulling the assets from up here at the top and you can cycle through the different games, Mega Man's one through six. And then here are the backgrounds specific to that particular level or particular game rather. So we have Mega Man one, we're gonna select this and as we can see, we can apply it and it puts this entire background here. Now I can, on my keyboard or on my gamepad, I can scroll up, down, left or right, and, it, and you build these screen by screen. So if you're familiar with Mario Maker, it's not screen by screen, like in a grid, like the way this is. But what you do is you just build what you need. If you don't include anything past the edge of a particular screen, the camera will never go there. So as you can see right here, I've built a one screen level, but if I put a platform up here and Mega Man tried to jump higher, he wouldn't go higher. If I put a pit here and Mega Man fell into the pit, he would not go down here. He would, once he hit this line, he would die. It would act like a pit. So what happens if I unlock this grid below it, it makes this now a two screen area. 
and I can build on it. So let's build some platforms. The platform icon is right here. Double click it and once again we can scroll through all the Mega Man games 1 through 6. There's our ladders. There's a huge assortment of death spikes. <laughs> and uh, so let's get a platform. Let's grab this. Alright, so now we've got a single platform and this icon right here is just for Mega Man. You grab that, drop him here, and now we have a Mega Man game. So to play test, all you have to do is go down here and hit this huge green play button. All right, so here's our amazing one screen Mega Man game. So Mega Man controls perfectly exactly how he does in all the old 8-bit classic Mega Man games. So you have regular shots, you have charge shots, the jumping is exactly how it's supposed to be, and then the sliding, of course. And as I said before, if Mega Man falls down here, since we don't have any platforms or anything to land on, it counts as a death. Alright, so we're going to back out. Oh, by the way, if you hit the pause menu and go up to this, um, I don't know why I'm pointing. Like, I'm pointing at my screen as if you can... <sighs> this, this icon right here right here it looks like a door with an arrow in it that will take you back out to your editor now if we add a platform down here suddenly this becomes an area where Mega Man can go to and we get this little icon right here which shows the connection state between this part of the grid and this part of the grid right now uh, it's got these two white blocks that aren't touching that means when Mega Man goes from this screen to this screen, it will it will transition. If you're familiar with the old Mega Man games and how you can hit a wall and just kind of it kind of pauses and slides you through it, that's what we're talking about here. So let's put a platform down here for me to land on, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I can jump down here, and the screen will transition down and take me down to this area. Now, if I click this icon and it brings those two white things together, it links them and now I've got a white dotted line here. What that means is that these two screens are actually connected so it won't transition, it'll be smooth. So if we play it now, we can see it loads me up right in the middle of this area and now the camera follows me because it considers this two screen area to be one giant screen. So that's an important thing you can remember to create a play style that you want to. Um, if you, As long as you click this and these two white blocks aren't touching, your screen will never scroll past the borders here. Unless you move Mega Man past the borders. Alright. So we've worked on our backgrounds. We've worked on our main blocks. You can build uh, as many platforms as you want to. I'm not sure if there's a sprite limit. I haven't read anything about a sprite limit, and I have not come up against a sprite limit myself. There may be. I just haven't seen it or heard about it yet. So we can build all these platforms, anything you want to, but that's kind of boring. We need some enemies. So this little guy right here is our regular enemy menu. So once again, we got Mega Man's 1 through 6. Now it does not have every enemy from these games. It has what I'm guessing they believe is the most popular enemies from these games. So we've got this guy, the classic jumper enemy from Mega Man 1. You can change color on some of the enemies, not all of them. So then you can scroll forward through the games and pick some things like this. As you know, in some of the later games, the things got a little more cartoony with their robots. That's okay. So you just kind of pick what you want. Also, over here next to the enemies, you have your power-ups. These are very important. Uh, so in under general power-ups, we have this right here, which is actually a checkpoint. So if we drop this here, it'll create a checkpoint that Mega Man can get. We have this, which is water. Very cool. So the water is not an instant kill. It is, it actually creates water physics. Wherever you put water, Mega Man can have water physics in there. These are the famous disappearing blocks. 
that disappear and reappear, you can set when they appear and disappear. That's what this number is here. This is in seconds. So you set in seconds when you want that to appear and disappear. These are timed bomb platforms. So when you place that and it says three, that means this is gonna stay a three. Let me move this down here. Until Mega Man jumps on the platform, then it's gonna count down and explode. Let me show you that real quick so you know exactly what it is. Alright. So we got our <laughs> we got our enemies up there just hanging out. Uh, we got our disappearing and reappearing block happening over here. Here's our checkpoint. And then this is our platform bomb. As you can see, it counts down and then explodes. Alright. So, there's lots of different things in here. These, This is a teleporter, so you can teleport to different areas. Let's see, over here we've got game specific things, like these shoot out flames, these shoot out electricity. These are the very famous and deadly quick lasers that appear in Mega Man 2. Um, these are falling platforms, this is a rocket platform. So you can go through here and see all the different things from the different games. Well, not all of them, a lot of the different things from different games that you can use. These are switching platforms, these are springs, so there's lots of cool things. You just have to go in there and really experiment and see what you can get Mega Man to do. Now, the last section here, right here, is of course our bosses. Um, right here, you have the classic doorway. So we would never want to make a Mega Man game without the classic doorway here. So let's put that right here. It's going to go this way into this area. And let's put a platform for us to land on so that we don't fall. Okay. So the, the doorways work exactly in the same way as they did in the old Mega Man games. You hit them, walk through, and it takes you to the next area. This is, a, this is a pretty plain, bland area. Also, the doors are one way, so you cannot go backwards. That is also just like the classic Mega Man games. So as you can see, this does not have all of the bosses from previous games. It just has some more popular ones, like here's Cut Man, and then we have a Crash Man, and you know, Top Man. So you can scroll through right now, and there's two bosses from every game. Will they add more? Probably. I mean, I'm hopeful that they will. But uh, as of launch, this is what we have available. And I know it looks like it may not be much, but trust me, there's a lot you can do in this game right here. Another cool thing you can do right here, click the music notes, and you can pick what music you want. Look at all this music from Mega Man 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all this great music. Um, you just go through here, find a song you want, you hit play, and we'll start playing that song for you. So whatever you want. So you just pick the song that you want, and now that's the song that's gonna play when your game starts. All right. Our, our level is pretty dumb right now, but that's okay. <laughs> this is about showing it off, not about building levels. So, right here, the final icon in our settings over here is what weapons you get. So we click on that, and right here, it's this. it doesn't really clearly show it, but this is actually a list. So right now, we've got the M Buster, the standard buster, that's our weapon. So if we click here in this empty space, then we can pick what we want to go in that empty space. So let's pick the Firestorm from Mega Man 1. All right, so now we've got the Buster and the Firestorm. Let's add something else. For example, the Rust Jet. Our good boy robot dog Rush does make an appearance here, so let's add the Rust Jet. All right, so what we can do is you can either hit pause and select which weapon you want or you can cycle through them um, if you set up a cycle button which you very should I've got it set up on my bumpers right here you can cycle through the weapons so here we have our rust jet 
and he takes us to our death. <laughs> so, now that we're done with our fantastic level, uh, we want to give it a name. So let's hit the gear icon up here, and up here where it says level name, we just click it, and then type in whatever you want, and that will be the name of your level. Oh, one, one other thing I forgot to mention was, as far as these weapons are concerned, you can actually remove them as well. So if you click on a weapon and go to nothing, it'll take it away. Click on it, nothing. Even the regular buster, click on it, nothing. Now as you can see, we have zero weapons going into this game. Uh, this is something you can use to make a level harder. If you want to make a level that's just about like puzzling, where you don't need your weapons, you can disable them. If you want to make a level that's like a runner, where you want people to run through your level and dodge the enemies instead of shooting them, you can disable the weapons. It's totally up to you. Once we're finally done with our level, we click this icon right here to save it. It saves very quickly. These levels do not take up much memory on your computer, as I'm sure you can imagine. It's uh, very, very small file sizes. So let's get out of here. So once we exit out, it takes us back to the main screen, and we can go to play, then online, and our password, which you would set up the very first time uh, you log into Mega Maker. going to connect to the server and then uh, let you upload your stupid level. So I've got a level right here that I've already made. Uh, it's a level I made for Ryu Car for his live stream. If you don't follow Ryu Car, totally recommend it. He's a cool dude. Check him out. Um, and here's our dumb level. <laughs> so if we want to upload this, we would just click this right here and upload it to the server. Now, much like Mario Maker, if you're familiar with that, you will have to play through the entire level yourself to prove that it can be beaten. Once you've done that, it will upload it, it'll give you a level ID, and you can share that level ID with other people who have Mega Maker who can then download and play your level. In addition to this, while you're online, you can click the Find Levels here. You can search here if you have the name of a level you want to look for, under miscellaneous, here's a place where you can enter a specific level ID to look it up exactly, to download and play it. Here you can just hit random level and see what you get and play that if you want to. Otherwise, you can just browse. It's going to load levels with the newest levels first. As we can see, there's a lot of levels here. And some of them have little numbers. What this is, is basically a ranking system. So when you play a level online, once you're done with it, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Green means positive numbers, that means thumbs up. Zero means nobody's rated it. And if you see a red number like this right here, that means it's received at least one thumbs down. At this early point in the game, the ratings don't really mean too much unless you see something with a really, really, really high rating or a really, really, really low rating, just because a lot of people haven't played these yet. So something like this that has at least four thumbs up, that's pretty cool. Here's five right here. You know, here's another one with a five. Those are the probably ones I would think about playing first because they're probably better than the rest. Here's one with a negative two, so that means it has multiple negative ratings. You may want to avoid that, but again, totally up to you. Check this out. This one's got 14 positive ratings, so that's probably a pretty good level. But again, it's up to you what you want to play. So anyway, that was just a quick intro to the game, how the level editor works. It is very, very intuitive, especially if you've played Super Mario Maker before, you pretty much know how this is going to work. So get to their website, download Mega Maker, it's totally free, it's a super small file, it's very intuitive, you'll get into it and have a lot of fun. If you make some levels, tweet them to me, I'd love to play your levels. Make one specifically for me, and I will play it on stream. But no crazy uh, Kaizo levels or troll levels. Come on, let's have good fun levels. <laughs> anyway, be sure to like and subscribe if you're on YouTube. Follow me on Twitch. I hope you enjoy playing Mega Maker, and I will see you next time. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe on YouTube, and hit that bell icon to get notifications when I upload new videos. 
You can follow me on Twitch to watch my live streams, and follow me on Twitter and Facebook to keep up with the latest announcements. And be sure to check out my Patreon page, which really helps me make more new content. Thanks.